uh, how to recover or strategies to recover itself uh, using uh, the Cell Ranger suite that includes uh, Cell Ranger R and also uh, is part of the Cell Ranger uh, count and Cell Ranger attack count for the Promarian uh, data type. So I think that to make sense to, to the talk, uh, before to talk about the how to recover cells, I uh, spent the first minutes explaining how indeed works the cell ranger R pipeline and what is the main use for that. Uh, so, uh, cell ranger arc is a suite of analysis pipelines uh, for processing chromatin multiom single cell attack and single cell RNA seed sequencing data, which enables to, to anal analyze data for both data types and their interconnection. So here's like a cartoon describing uh, that we have um, from the very same cell barcodes associated where we can uh, integrate and then uh, analyze information. Uh, as there is uh, a lot of information related with this, I add some, um, some icons here where we can go and just uh, look at different kind of detailed information as there is a lot of of data related with this. Um, next, what we have is the, uh, this is an example only uh, to show how how is the workflow. We have different workflows when we are running cell range app. So this is an example uh, for one sample, one gene well, one attack, and one gene expression flow cell. So you can see here that we have the nuclei and we have the, the common chip where we uh, have uh, information associated with the chromatin accessibility and with the gene, exp uh, gene expression. So we have two uh, different libraries, each one for, for any of these uh, data types. They are sequencing separately. So uh, beyond this point that you have, that you see here, you can see my mouse. Uh, we can see that the cell ranger R problem starts. So uh, let's say that either start the multiplexer in the data, and then there is a there is a bunch of steps related with how the pipeline uh, count or estimate cells for the chromatin accessibility for the gene expression and the integration of these both assays. Uh, again, if you want to know more about the different um, workflows that are present in the pipeline, we can go here and we can see that this is just one example that I'm presenting, but indeed there is different kind of workflows when you can have, uh, let's say, different uh, number of libraries to integrate in the in the pipeline. So you have uh, maybe to to scroll a bit of the information. Um, next, uh, when we are running cell ranger arc, um, I would like to mention one, uh, uh, let's say, the main components that 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 are that compose the pipeline because this is important to understand to link with the strategies that we have to recover cells. So um, let's say that in the top part of this uh, diagram, we have the gene expression data. These are FASTQC files that are aligned, are counted, and so we can get the raw metrics. That is uh, the gene barcode metrics that contains all their information related with true cells uh, from the non true cells for the background. So, if there is uh, making the same process for the peak barcode metrics, where we have the fragments that are aligned, uh, the, then it's uh, run a uh, call peaks algorithms that also produce the account metrics for this information. But then uh, we have, uh, let's say, the, the main algorithm for this pipeline that is called joint cell calling. The using calling is uh, not only one algorithm, it's a, a collection of algorithms that associates a subset of barcodes observed uh, in the analysis that enables to make a single cell resolution analysis uh, for, let's say for true cells, for non-true cells. When we have these uh, integrated data metrics, so uh, we have, uh, 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 besides the gene expression data and the attack data, we have also uh, metrics that is linkage both uh, assays that is called the feature linkage. 
And so this is, let's say, the power of the pipeline because we can have accurate information that is linking the, the uh, CIS regulatory elements with the transcription site. Um, so uh, beyond here, there is a lot of tools that you can use for run the analysis. But I, I want to add this uh, joint cell calling flow here in order that you can see uh, briefly uh, how is the integration of the gene expression and the attack uh, of the attack data? Because here in these scattering plots, each one of these dots is representing a cell. Uh, and in the y axis, in the in the x axis, we have the transposition events that the realizing peaks per barcode. And in the y axis, we have information on the UMIs related with the gene expression data set. So we are expecting to see every time that we run a pipeline like this, uh, a well separation between true cells and non-true cells from the background. So let's say that this is an ideal case when we are running this pipeline. And so you can also like measure here the number of these transposition events and the UMIs that, uh, let's say, uh, in average contain uh, these uh, the selected uh, true cells. I'm going to go back. In, in, a, in a minute with this. Okay, but I want to emphasize here a very relevant steps that are not, uh, let's say, as intuitive, but before to, to run the, the joint cell calling, there is, let's say, in the background, there are filtering steps that impact a lot the number of cells that you get when you are running cell regular R. Uh, before to, to call the, this algorithm, we have uh, two filtering steps that are related with what we call attack exclusions. So it means that if the, if the quality of the, uh, the chromatin accessibility information is not so good, it's going to exclude or it's going to mask a lot of the cells. So these cells are not going to be taken into account when making the joint calling. So this is a very relevant step because when it's running the third filtering step, uh, to count uh, these as uh, true cells is because in each one of these cells, we have at least one count from the gene expression and one from the, uh, from the chromatin accessibility data. And after the, the filtering were completed, the, let's say the, the cells that survive this filtering, so after this is running the algorithm steps that are related with the joint cell calling. Uh, during these, uh, during these uh, algorithms, uh, they are run a lot of, or are called a lot of algorithms that impact the way uh, how, the, how the quality uh, control metrics are performed. So we need to be very careful when interpreting the data in the in the output or in the HTML uh, summary report. So because uh, even in the different uh, collection of pipelines that contain cell ranger, they call different kind of algorithms that are derived from the same one. So this is reflected in the quality and in the number of cells that we get. For the Johnson calling, uh, in general, we have the, 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 the duplication step follow for the order of magnitude derived initial grouping. This is a very specific algorithm that is using in this pipeline, follow for the Cummings boundary refinements and the map classification to the duplicate the barcodes. There is a lot of details here. So I also add this in order that you can see that the bar calling, there are here the specific three filtering steps that I'm talking about and the cells that survive these are following for these three for these four specific algorithms. Uh, I cannot have enough time to go into these details, but this is the result that we have in the output of the cell ranger R pipeline. The next step here is that so just in general, how we run the cell ranger R pipeline? Well, in general, uh, there is a command in the in Linux environment when we just all after to install the, the software, we call the cell ranger R count command, uh, follow for the ID of the sample, and then it's added the reference uh, that 
uh, Serranger R has per bill references. In this case, uh, I'm calling the for the human species uh, or genome, the ER CH38. Uh, but also there is a, an important uh, argument that is the libraries. In the libraries command, we are providing a file that is indeed describing how many FASTQ uh, files we have for the chromatin accessibility, but also for the gene expression. So this is a different step that we have to do previous to run the pablan that, uh, that I can have here also additional information on how you can prepare this file, this uh, library file, in order to uh, provide to the pablan with all the information that is required to run the pablan. Next. After to, to run the pipeline, we have a, a collection of outputs. This is the general overview. So we have uh, the primary files and the secondary files. Let's say that in this main uh, square that I have here, we have uh, three categories of outputs. One is the multi outputs that is the related with the joint call algorithm. So we have a web summary report that contains information about the quality for the gene expression from the chromatin accessibility. And uh, let's say uh, the most uh, standard quality control user for each one of these pipelines. But we have also inside of these, Another folder that is called uh, where the, the runs or the keys, all the secondary analysis that is related with the dimensional reduction uh, outputs, the cluster based analysis, the feature linkers, that is one of the main, let's say, uh, benefits of the pipeline, and also the transcription factor analysis. Uh, but we have also in the primary resource information exclusively related with the attack accounts and the gene expression accounts. There is, again, a lot of information related with this. So just to give context, I'm going to show you briefly the, the, the summary report that contains, uh, let's say, uh, the information about the number of estimated cells, the attack median, and also the gene expression median uh, per Per cell. And also, here we have uh, a particular uh, section describing the joint view, where is the information related with the joint calling, with the joint cell calling algorithm. So, here in this uh, page, you can find a lot of details, but no, it's, it's not a lot. Let's say a more detailed expl explanation about how to interpret each one of the information that is provided in this read. Now, um, um, next, uh, if, we have, if you have doubts about of particular metrics, there is also provided a web page where it's detailing a bit more uh, what is expected to have each one of these metrics. And this is very relevant because when you don't get, let's say, the quality, the expected quality, so you need to go to to read all these details. Uh, next, okay, that we have now the information. So I talk about the, the young cell calling that is integrated the attack fragments and the UMIs from the gene expression. So let's say this is the ideal case, but what happens when we don't have this kind of outputs? And we got here, I'm providing two examples. Uh, some kind of information that is uh, not, it's not uh, projecting a pretty well separation between the cells. This is one case. So you can see here that it's not in the top and it's a bit mixed information. Or you can indeed not get the number of estimated cells that you are expecting according with the nucleic target that was done during the, during the library preparation. So when this happened, and, and you uh, think that you uh, that uh, probably you can recover cells using different strategies. You have resources to do this, but I'm I'm a, I'm aware that uh, you are going to have a tons of questions related with this because uh, one of the questions that I have is possible causes affecting the counts, and there is a lot of answer related with this. 
that goes from the quality, from the, from the libraries, and also includes how the cell ranger are algorithms are uh, considering each one of the filtering steps that it's going to affect the number of estimated cells that you have. Uh, but uh, like this is a case-to-case -case situation, so I cannot provide more details about it. But uh, what we can see is what resources do we have to recover cells when we have these kind of situations? So I'm going to talk specifically about two strategies. One is the cell color overwrite, and the other is the barcode selection. So the first one is the easier of the strategies that we can run, because basically we can select the minimum of transposition events that we can see here uh, against the number of minimum of UMI counts per cells to include. Uh, so here, uh, to go with more details about this. So this, um, uh, the, these parameters are provided uh, like arguments in the same pipeline that, we, that I showed previously. So we have here an uh, argument that is called mean attack counts. So you basically, uh, I have another slide for this. I'm going to trace here um, some uh, lines in order to look at the values in the axis uh, where we can, when you can define, uh, okay, I want to recover cells that where the minimum number of attackers position even is 100. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and also you can uh, provide the minimum number of UMIs, so that is 102. So what I'm saying to the pipeline is, okay, I want to recover the cells that are included here in the top right uh, inside of the pipeline. But there are important considerations here that I'm going to talk about. Okay. Oh, I have another one. Okay. <laughs> uh, here. Uh, so here in this example, in this example, what I want to say is that besides to define a threshold to take this, to call this override, uh, you need also to consider, oh, sorry, that when you are doing this, you are going to recover the cells that you want to include with the minimum number of attractions position events and UMI counts, but you need to take into account that one reason why these cells were not taken into account is because for the cell ranger R pipeline, these are doublets or these have low quality. So the cells that you are going to recover according with that, with this pipeline can be considered, let's say, um, or that can contain certain kind of low quality. So you need to draw additional quality controls uh, when you are analyzing this data. And this is the simplest approach. The second one is most elaborated because uh, also another, another uh, thing that I want to highlight here is that this, uh, this, uh, uh, this strategy is running again uh, since scratch, the full cell ranger R pipeline. That means that uh, you are going to have new, new uh, primary and secondary outputs from the from the pipeline. Uh, so uh, this is the main difference with this second approach, because in this second approach, you are going to run or you are going to recover cells only taking into account the secondary analysis. So it's not going to be performing again the alignment or the, or the bill of the row count matrices because this is running only in previous processed cell ranger R outputs. So this is a very remarkable difference between the pipelines. Uh, the, the thing with this particular strategy is that we need to provide to the pipeline a new argument that is called barcodes. So what is this? This is... Uh, these are valid barcodes that you have pre-selected some way in order to say to the pipeline, I want that you ignore your filtering steps, you 
take only into account the barcodes that I'm providing as input. So here, let's say the deal is how I get valid barcodes. This is the real question in this kind of, of a strategy. So uh, only uh, to provide a bit more of information, and this is just one strategy that we decide to shoot, but I'm sure that there is uh, more strategies related with this. Uh, what I can say is that uh, you need to take into account one uh, a couple of things. First, if you want to use the barcode selection strategy to recover sales, you need to have valid cell ranger art outputs. You cannot run into a scratch, you cannot say that, but you need to, to have it run it before. The second step is that you need to use cell ranger are the analyzed command that is, uh, an, let's say, a complementary um, way to process the data. Also, you need to provide a list of valid barcodes, and you need to be aware that the pipeline only acts under the secondary analysis. It means it takes the data that was previously produced. Now. This is only an example. The, in this diagram, I, what, I'm, what I want to, to show is how one way to identify valid barcodes from the strategy. Yes, but this is just our idea of how to do it in the best way or, or to get the best benefit of the data that we have. So uh, in general, this is, let's say, uh, this is the hardware made with coding. Okay, uh, because the other uh, part that I presented, it's Linux based. So here we take the multi row data. Let's, that is, uh, let's say it's the FASTQC files from the gene expression and from the attack or the accessibility information, and we run a different suite for cell ranger that is called cell ranger cow that only acts over the gene expression data. Let's say I'm ignoring the attack. So when I get this information here, I get barcodes. And these barcodes from the gene expression are valid only for the gene expression data, and it's not excluding the attack exclusion that I said at the beginning. So what, is, what it means is that it doesn't matter if the gene expression and the attack are the same quality because I'm not making exclusions. I'm only taking into account gene expression. So I get gene expression barcodes. So we did the same, but with the accessible chromatin, chromatin data. We call another uh, suite of cell ranger that is called cell ranger at that count, where we are running this only in the chromatin accessibility multi data dataset. And then doing that, uh, here's a mistake, a type of mistake. We got a tag barcodes. So this attack bar, now we have gene expression barcodes and we have attack barcodes, but we cannot compare directly because these are not identical between uh, each one of the pipelines. So we need to make um, uh, a barcode translation that can match with the multi data dataset. So it means it means that uh, when we uh, have the barcode translation from the gene expression and from the attack, so then in this step, we indeed can match the cells. So when we match the cells, so we can have valid barcodes that are, let's say, that are valid for the border size. But this is only a way to do it. I mean, uh, you can probably figure out another, another way to do that. So this is the barcode CSV files that we are going to provide to the pipeline in order to run it in the secondary analysis. If you have a successfully run uh, from the cell ranger are reanalyzed, so we are going to have a similar output where it's only run in the secondary, in the output of the secondary analysis. It means that it's going to run over the clustering, the dimensionality reduction, and the important feature linkage. Link, linkage, where we want to have the information of the regulatory, active regulatory elements in the chromatin accessibility data that are associated with the transcription. So an additional file that you are going to have is this JSON file 
that is saying, um, let's say it's a kind of validation that says that uh, you successfully, uh, the pipeline successfully count the barcodes provided. And so you have now information about the number of feature linkages, the number of gene peaks, uh, and uh, complementary data that you can use for further analysis. Okay, so until this step, we see, okay, we have two strategies is the override, the, the standard cell ranger R pipelines, the overriding call, but we can also use the cell ranger R reanalyze in order to provide valid barcodes that we want to count. Now, just as uh, to illustrate, let's say, uh, probably you are wondering uh, how many cells I can recover or what is the percentage associated with this? So this is a very tricky question because I'm pretty sure that this depends on the, of the data set that you have in your particular case. But uh, providing a bit of information, let's say that you have in a standard run, uh, here three samples. Sample is five, is six, and is seven. So we can see here that the target for all this was 10,000 sets. But Serenger R, because of the filtering steps and the joint calling cells, only detect around uh, 700 for S5, 40,000 40, for S6, and 35,000 for S7. So it's a very low number of, of, of valid of cells. So we try this pipeline, and so we can have in the intersection of these pipelines just a few increments for the S5. So you can see here that depending on each case, we can increase a lot the number of recovery. For example, here in the S6 was double, almost in the S7, it was almost double of the size of the previously recovery cells with the standard pipelines. So in terms of percentages, we can see that uh, in some cases it's suitable and it's possible to get to recover uh, until 80 percentage or 78 percentage in most cases I have seen that numbers of the recovery cells. So this is just uh, to, to leave something uh, to think and okay I will finish it uh, the presentation just in my opinion uh, in my experience some considerations and tips about about all these strategies uh, is, first of all, you need to review the library quality controls uh, in order to have more information about what can be possible causes to have uh, a low estimated number of cells. Uh, you also need to consider probably that uh, there is not a, a, a let's say, uh, perfect association between the quality controls uh, in the lab and the quality controls that you see in the cell ranger arc output. So you need to check this probably case by case. Uh, the recovery cell uh, strategies, each one of the we have here presented or other, do not equal to have high quality. You need to run again uh, quality controls in order to see if Indeed, the cells that you have uh, are, are, let's say, from this quality. So you need to do something else here. Uh, cell danger act is also more estrogen than cell danger standalone pipelines. So that is why we can recover cells. And also, cell danger, cell danger pipelines apply different algorithms in, in the different collection of, of algorithms that they have. So, results indeed vary between pipelines. Uh, some quality controls also depend on tissue type, or let's say are optimizing using different kinds of tissue types. So particularly, um, most of the literature talk about that the frozen tissue is challenging. So you need to take also this into account when you are interpreting the quality control results. And well, there is some kind of answers in the cell ranger R troubleshooting. So this is a good start point to look at possible answers, but indeed you need probably to, to scroll out all, all information in other resources. And that's it for I have. I'll see more questions. Thank you.